Hey, sorry I've not made any videos uh, really in the past few days. That's because I've been working on uh, several jobs. Yes, I have more than one job, so everything will return to normal on Saturday. One thing I've actually stated in countless, probably thousands of videos, is uh, the statements regarding pressure mediation. Of course, all fields undergo pressure mediation. One thing that uh, Sir Isaac Newton was wrong about, uh, he talks about things that are traveling on a straight line will continue to travel on a straight line, and that, of course, is probably incorrect. There are absolutely no straight lines in the universe. All uh, force vectors are, of course, curved linear. Imagine a dog were actually on a leash, and that leash were, uh, at the other end was tied to a stake in the yard. The dog could actually never travel in a, a straight line away. It would actually follow a curved linear vector since uh, the homeostasis, and this is a word everybody should actually know, or if you don't, then you should certainly look it up, basically uh, meaning a, a state of rest, and of course rest would be uh, inertia, or the ether. Um, all field phenomena, and uh, even matter itself, acts like fields, because matter itself is nothing other than a super high energy electrostatic condensate, for lack of a better of denotation. That's all fundamentally the fundamental particle is, and of course all atoms are dynamos, and you know matter mutually accelerates, but not towards each other, but towards a null pressure point between each other, of course, conventionally through objective, uh, uh, conventional and superficial observation, we think that uh, objects are accelerating towards one another, but they never are. They're always accelerating. You can actually see this underneath the supercell, and I knew this was the case even before ever hearing about the supercell or the ferrocell, is that the uh, matter would not accelerate towards uh, each another mutually, but rather towards the lowest pressure point uh, between the two. And by pressure point, and speaking about pressure mediation, specifically we actually have to uh, give uh, um, definition to, and I've said this many thousands of times, talking about uh, pressure mediation regarding fields, but what do we mean by pressure? Specifically all field modalities, whether they be linear or transverse, um, must ultimately uh, of their nature seek homeostasis. In other words, kind of like, uh, you know, a ball inside of a uh, ping pong, uh, not a ping pong, excuse me, a pinball machine, well, you know, will wants to roll towards, uh, you know, the little space at the bottom there, and, you know, you have to keep flicking it out, and you have to keep, of course, exerting force to keep that ball moving in a pinball machine analogously, and all field modalities are working their way towards counter space. All matter itself, of course, uh, seeks the lowest pressure. And when we say pressure, what we're actually referring to in giving uh, definition to the term pressure and talking about field modalities is referring to uh, centrifugal divergent force vectors. Specifically, the only thing that actually gives anything magnitude in the visible universe is, of course, magnetism. And magnetism's uh, specific geometry is a torus, and uh, specifically a force vector, and it's hard to actually envision this, and I've thought of various ways, and the easiest way to talk about a force vector, because a magnet doesn't have poles, and of course, conventionally and superficially, well, sure it does, a magnet has a north pole and a south pole, but what does that actually mean? If you actually take a magnet and slice it a million times like a hunk of salami, each little section will have a north pole and a south pole. So if there is no actual north pole located here or south pole located here, and if you slice it up a million times, you end up with a million little magnets, each with an individual north pole and a south pole. So there's no actual pole located in a magnet. We're actually uh, talking about the incommensurability of the field pressure of a force vector. <clears throat> when we actually say magnet, we're actually talking about the singular point source that actually defines the magnetic field that surrounds a magnet. So if a magnet doesn't actually have a north pole and a south pole, and it uh, cannot be localized, rather as a pressure mediation, inverse to counter space, i.e. space, the creation of space, and that's all space is. Space has no property. Space is exactly uh, no different than a shadow. We think a shadow is a thing because we stand in a shadow. We can't see things, and we feel colder standing in a shadow. But a shadow is an absence of light. Space is not a thing itself, and this is why... Nikola Tesla called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot for many reasons, but specifically Einstein's uh, great fallacy, and this is the fallacy of all quantum mechanics, is the reification of space as having properties and acting upon other things. Tesla said this is absolutely ridiculous. Space has uh, attributes, just like a shadow does. 
um, but it has no properties. Space cannot be warped or bent, but of course we all grew up with this insane, crazy BS in our science fiction movies and TV shows about bending space and time. And of course, time is not a thing. It's only a measure of magnitudes and space has absolutely no properties. So talking about bending space is equally ridiculous as talking about feeding a leprechaun or a bending unicorn farts. It's absolutely nonsensical. But getting back to the topic of pressure, by pressure, we actually mean phenomena. And anything that is phenomenal, being the inverse of the term noumena, means that it partakes of a spatial vector, not the spaces uh, being given properties or uh, aggrandized by myself at all, but meaning that it actually has a vector whereby which it is demonstrably measurable through some sort of visual or instrument instrumentational evidence. In other words, it actually has a vector whereby which it partakes of magnitude. And anything that actually partakes of magnitude, like I said, the only reason anything in the universe actually has magnitude is due to magnetism. Remember back in school they said, well, every atom is like 99.9999999% empty space, or nothing, if you will. Kind of like a, a giant balloon where the nucleus is a super tiny BB right at the center. Well, that's really one of the few things that modern science gets correct. But of course, every atom is nothing other than an electrostatic or magnetodynamic uh, dynamo, a little miniature uh, generator of Mother Nature. Like I said, the only thing, reason anything has magnitude in our universe is due to magnetism and magnetism only. So when we actually talk about pressure mediation, we actually mean the dissipation of a force vector, the dissipation of force, whereby which any and all phenomena, be it field modalities, circular, transverse, longitudinal, or matter itself, like I said, matter is nothing other than an ultra-high energy uh, electrostatic condensate, whereby which everything that partakes of and is phenomenal, because of the Maxwellian field equations never define a field, they actually give credence to a field over a period of time with a given vector, with a given result, whether that be joules, watts, amps, volts, so on and so forth, where in which all these phenomena of fields and or matter, there's no distinction between f uh, field phenomena and matter, seek homeostasis, homeostasis being a rest or a null. It is the case that no, there's no such thing as permanent matter. All matter ultimately dissolves. All branches of ancient uh, metaphysics, both Indian, Greek, and Egyptian, have said the same thing. There's absolutely no... And of course, it seems infinite compared to our limited and very, very short lifespans, but there's no such nonsense, obviously, as permanent matter. I mean, ultimately, matter dissipates, but all force vector, and specifically in the whole bubble of things, we refer to phenomena as having magnitude. When we speak of field pressure mediation, what we're meaning is just like the uh, the silver metal ball in a, in a pinball machine always wants to roll down to that little hole down there and makes you stick in another quarter of the machine. Everything is actually seeking homeostasis in counter space. Anything that is phenomenal, that partakes of centrifugal divergence, that partakes of force. And when we say force and when we say create space, this is a distinction without a difference. To say space and to actually say force or to say magnetism is absolutely one and the same thing. And getting back to uh, the fact that every atom is 99.9999% not a, a subatomic particle or proton or a neutron, neutron is accurate. So where and which and by what do we uh, attribute the uh, enormous amount of nothing? And of course, it's not nothing. It's uh, electrostatic and a magnetodynamic uh, dynamo. Every little atom, of course, is nothing other than a dynamo. We know this by shuffling our feet across the carpet and getting shocked and, you know, 10 billion other phenomena. So what is that so-called nothing? Um, what is uh, the... Uh, the pressure mediation that we're actually see speaking about, and that is that all centrifugal uh, divergent, i.e. magnetism, and magnetism and create space and uh, force vector, and all reference to one and the same thing, seeks a, uh, seeks a homeostasis in counter space. This is the reason why, and you need to look at the Poincaré disk model of projective geometry, it would actually take me hours to talk about this, Poincaré disk model of uh, projective geometry, 
why all, all uh, magnetism, of course, is a dielectric field. The loss of that uh, homeostasis of energy, i.e. inertia, i.e. the ether, manifests in the creation of space. It is literally a phenomenal force vector. Specifically, when we speak about a donut shape or a torus, we're obviously talking about the geometry of space. But once again, space has no properties. I'm not giving properties to space. I'm referring to the attributional effect of a divergent force vector, i.e. magnetism, i.e. the toroidal geometry, that actually is the definition of a magnetic field. That is the dielectric field in the loss of inertia or the homeostasis, i.e. the energy. Human beings, of course, have always throughout time have seen things upside down. This is why the ancient Greeks and Indians specifically would talk about the inverted tree of uh, of. Uh, of the cosmos, that the human beings uh, always saw things upside down, that the, the, uh, that the universe was an inverted tree. It would take a long uh, time to uh, actually discuss that. But human beings specifically, we think of energy as a release of energy. We think of energy, we think of a nuclear explosion, for example, but that's not energy, that's actually the impotency, the release of energy. You know, energy would be, of course, that softball-sized lump of uh, fissionable uranium or plutonium. That would be, and of course, that's still radioactive and emitting enormous amounts of energy, but that would be a kind of homeostasis of true energy. And human beings always see things inversely to how they actually are. That is actual energy, not the dissipation of energy. But speaking about pressure mediation and uh, force vectors, we are actually talking about the curvilinear force vectors of uh, force and motion, which are always curvilinear towards a null point, i.e. increasing dissipation of force, which is increasing inertia and acceleration. Uh, the release of force in motion is the dissipation or the loss of potential. Increasing inertia and acceleration is obviously the dissipation of force and motion, i.e. centrifugal divergence, because all magnetic uh, vectors, i.e. The, uh, the dielectric field, which is what magnetism is, are uh, expanding and contracting uh, circles. But in speaking about an actual force vector, and I've talked about this endlessly, a force vector is a three-dimensional S-curve. If you actually make a wire out of uh, and uh, bend it in the shape of an S, and you take in each end of the S, and you bend it inverse to one another, that is an actual force vector. And this is where we get a little more frequency to the geomagnetic precession that it actually defines a magnetic force vector, which paints, if you will, the inside geometry of an expanding toroidal magnetic force vector. Uh, polarity is not two-dimensional. Force in motion is denotatively, goddamn, excuse my language, three-dimensional. A magnet doesn't have two poles, and people need to get it in their heads of what an actual force vector is, which is three-dimensional. It's a three-dimensional force vector, which is extrapolating out in fullness, of course, the toroidal geometry, which is, of course, the geometry of magnetism, it is the geometry of that which creates space, because a divergent force in motion centrifugal force vector creates space. But this is not giving credence or, uh, or uh, reification of space, which has no properties, just like a shadow. Uh, it has attributes, exactly like a shadow. Space and a shadow are perfect interchangeable uh, analogies for one another. Uh, we always uh, identify shadows and we know what they do, but a shadow has absolutely no properties because a shadow is not anything. It's a privation of something else. And that's all space is. So space is actually uh, the phenomenal manifestation of pure potential, except it's the after effect of the release of that potential. And this, of course, is the after effect of a force vector. And a force vector does what? A force vector is magnetism. And what does a force vector do? A force vector creates space. But don't mistake that for the reification or the inflation of space conceptually, because space has absolutely no properties. And this is an exact quote from Nikola Tesla, that particular portion anyway. And that's why Tesla actually called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot. Specifically, on that particular point. He actually called him a fool and countless other things, but on that particular aspect, that's the reason why Tesla called Einstein a crackpot. But this is what I mean by uh, pressure mediation, because everything is seeking, if you don't know this word, look it up, everything is seeking homeostasis. And homeostasis is always in counter space. 
It is the lowest pressure mediation of any and all phenomena, be it field phenomena or actually, uh, as the ancient Greeks would call it, gross matter or hyle, matter itself. Matter and fields are no different. Matter is nothing other than a very high energy modality of uh, a field. And uh, anyway, I've talked about that endlessly. Uh, it would take a long time to go into that, discussing matter and fields. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hope you like these videos. And uh, I'll catch you later.